see today we will see the next concept of data structure that is queue just like stack queue is also there queue is also one type of linear data structure which falls under non primitive type of data structure okay in that classification of data structures queue appears at it is one type of non primitive data structure which is of type linear linear list it is of type linear list you see again queue stack and queue these are the examples of list why these are the examples of list because stack queue are always in a linear manner they are always following some alignment one after the another that's why stack and queue both are the examples of linear list okay specifically these are the list list means we are able to add one uh, one by one elements in a list and it is linear linear means those list is sequential one one after the another we can be able to arrange in a proper manner that's why it is a linear list stack and queue both are the examples of linear list we have already covered or you right now know what exactly stack is for example any stack consisting of number of boxes that is the example of stack now we will start with queue what is queue a queue it is an ordered collection of items you see it is an ordered collection of items obviously queue it is the ordered collection of items but that collection of items is always ordered order or the sequencing is always followed at the time of formation of a queue a queue is an ordered collection of items where an item or element is inserted at one end and that inserting end is called as rear and the existing item is removed at some other end which is called as front in short you see a queue it is the ordered collection of elements queue consisting consist of two things front and rear okay what is front it is the end of the queue at which we are able to remove elements from the queue and what is rear it is the end of the queue at which we are able to insert elements into a queue okay these are the very important two concepts two words related with queue okay you see in queue we are able to insert number of elements at the same time we are able to delete number of elements from a queue okay element can be deleted or removed from the end of a queue which is always referred as front okay and we are able to insert element into a queue at the end of the queue which is referred as rear okay in short front is nothing but the end from which we can remove element rear it is the end at which we can insert elements into a queue okay and the next thing queue is also called as before list okay queues are also referred as p4 list the full form of this p4 is first in first out okay you see the rule this we can space we can consider p4 as a rule related with queue queue always follows first in first out approach okay first in first out approach means you see in queue we are inserting number of elements one by one okay and whatever the first element which will be in in a queue that is the first element that will be out okay that means the preference is always given in queue in such a way that if you are coming first then you will the first person who is coming out okay if you are coming first then you will be the first person who is, who is able to come out from a queue that is nothing but queue okay in queue there are important or two operations are allowed that is the nq operation and dq operation okay nq and dq these are the two operations which are allowed in a queue what is nq nq means inserting an item 
into the back of the cube. If you want to insert some element into a cube, that operation is referred as n cube. And if you want to remove some element from the cube, then it is referred as d cube operation. These are the two operations which can be performed on any cube. Okay. Let's see the example of cube. The people standing in a railway reservation row. In any particular railway station, the people who are standing in a row to take their ticket, that row can be considered as an example of a queue. Okay. Another example of queue. For example, one temple is there and there is a line behind or line outside that temple. That line is also the example of queue. Okay. You see, in terms of railway reservation counter, whatever the person who is coming first, that will be the first person who will come out. That means it is following first in, first out approach. If you are first in, then you will be the first person who will be the out with your own ticket. Okay. In the same way, the king is there in terms of temple outside line also. The people, line of people is outside the temple. These two can be considered as the real-time examples of queue. Okay. Queue is nothing but a line in which the approach is always first in, first out. Now the next thing, in terms of Q, if you want to implement Q, Q can be implemented in two ways. Same as that like stack. We have implemented stack by using array as well as by using pointer. In the same way, Q can be implemented by two ways that is by using array and by using pointer. If we are implementing, creating and implementing Q with the help of arrays, then it is called as static implementation of a Q. If we are implementing a Q with the help of pointer, then it is called as dynamic implementation of a Q. Okay. For example, this left hand side diagram shows one representation of a linear Q, which is implemented with the help of array. Okay. You see here at first line, this is a queue which is capable of storing 10 number of elements. Okay. And when the queue is empty, you see here we have created empty queue. When queue is empty, always remember that the value of front and rear are always same. That is minus one, minus one. Okay. This is the very important point. Always remember that whenever we are creating an empty queue, initially the value of front and rear both are minus one. Okay, that means if you find out front equals to minus one and rear equals to minus one, the meaning of it is right now the queue is empty. Okay, for example, later on in that queue, we are inserting some values. For example, five initially, then seven is inserted, then twelve inserted, then eight value inserted, then nine value inserted. Okay, that means whenever if this is the current instance of the queue, at that time, the value of front is this zero address and the value of the rear is this four address. Okay. Just remember that what is front? It is the end from which element will be out. Element will be deleted. deleted. And rear, that is nothing but the end at which we are able to insert element. Okay. That's why this zero address it is nothing but the value of our front and this four address of array. This is nothing but the value of our rear. That's why if this is the current instance of the queue and it is containing these number of elements and if these are the address of, addresses of this queue, then front is zero and rear equals to four. Okay, this zero and this four. Zero address means this is the end from which we can delete element. That's why this is the front. For address, this is nothing but the end at which we can be able to insert elements. That's why this is the rear that is equals to 4. Okay. For example, later on, 
we are removing some elements from the front end we are removing five value then we have removed seven value then automatically as we are performing remove operation here delete operation dq operation here obviously the value of front will change that's why the value of front will become this two address okay that means front means front is nothing but the end from which the next item can be deleted and obviously the next item that will be deleted will be 12 that's why the value of front will become address 2 and the value of rear will be same that is 4 okay that means just observe here if we are deleting elements from a queue the value of front will change okay and there is no effect on rear but vice versa if we are inserting some element into the queue then front will not be changed but rear value get changed okay remember that if we are deleting value from queue front value get changed front address will get changed but if we are inserting some value into the queue in that case front value will remain constant but real value get rear value get changed okay for example, this is one representation of a queue in memory. For example, queue is consisting of elements 12, 8, then 9, then 3 get inserted, then 10, then 11. Okay. If this is the current instance of a queue, then this 12 element can be, this is the front end of a queue. And this 11 value, this memory address will be the rear end of a queue. Okay. This can be considered as a some general representation of queue. Then types of queues. Queues can be of four types. The types of queues are simple queue, second one circular queue, then priority queue, and last one DQ. DQ is nothing but double ended queue. Okay, there are four types of queues: simple queue, circular queue, priority queue, and double ended queue, or it is also referred as DQ. Okay. We will start with simple queue. What is simple queue? In simple queue, insertion occurs at the rear end of the list and deletion occurs at the front end of the list. Whatever we have seen till now, that is nothing but the simple queue. For example, this diagram represents some simple queue. This is the front end and this is the rear end. That means we are able to insert element from this rear end and we are able to delete elements from this front end. Okay. If such a representation we are using, then such a kind of queue is called as simple queue. What is simple queue? In simple queue, insertion operation, insertion operation occurs at the rear end of the list and deletion operation occurs at the front end of the list. If such a representation of queue is used by us, then it is called as a simple queue then second type of queue that is circular queue what is circular queue a circular queue it is a queue in which all nodes are treated as circular such that the last node last node follows the first node okay for example this is the general representation of a circular queue for example this queue is able to store eight number of elements with memory addresses 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. At location 0, the value saved in a queue is, value inserted in a queue is 10, then 20, then 30, then 40, then 50. Okay. Then obviously, this is the front end of a queue and this is the rear end of the queue. That means from here, deletion gate occurs and from this end, insertion gate occurs. Okay. And just see, this seventh address, this is the last node of this circular queue, which is attached with the first node of a queue. That's why it is called as a circular queue. A circular queue is a queue in which all nodes are treated as circular, such that the last node, that is this last node, seventh address node, which is followed with first node, for example, zero address node. node. That's why it is called as circular queue. Next one, priority queue. What is priority queue? A priority queue, it is a queue that contains items that have some present priority. 
that means each and every element comes with some priority and an element can be inserted or removed from any position depending upon the some priority okay just remember that in priority queue each and every element each and every address of the node comes with some priority okay and we are able to insert or remove element from queue from any position okay but that insertion or removation is depends completely on what is the priority of the element if the priority high then we are able to insert it at any end if the priority is high, if the priority is high to remove then we can remove that element from any end okay if such a representation is there then it is called as a priority queue in priority queue each and every element comes with some priority okay for example consider that we have one queue that queue is consisting of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 This queue is capable to store seven number of elements, and for example, the priority of this queue is one. Priority of second element is one. Priority of third element is one. Priority of fourth element is two. Then priority is three. Then priority is three. Then priority is three. Okay, that means obviously these three elements have the high priority that is three. That means we are able to insert or delete. any of these three elements because these three elements have the high priority associated with it okay this is the example of a priority queue next one double ended queue okay it is also referred as d queue double ended queue what is double ended queue it is a queue in which insertion and deletion takes place at both ends if we are able to insert element or delete elements from both ends of the queue then it is called as double ended queue okay you see its name is representing what exactly this queue is it is double ended double ended means from both ends we can insert or delete element okay that's why it is called as double ended queue for example this is one diagram which shows double ended queue this is the front end of a queue and this is the rear end of a queue and from this front end we can perform both insertion and deletion operation as well as for this rear end we can perform both that insertion and deletion operations okay such a situation is there that's why it is referred as double ended queue okay these are the four types of queues next thing is operations on queue in queue or on queue we can perform number of operations like queue function is there n queue function with item as an parameter is there d queue function is there is empty function is there and size function is there okay we will see what is the usage of each and every these operations this queue function it is it is used to create a new empty queue for creating new empty queue we can use this queue function with round parameters then next one is the n queue function n queue function and in bracket we have passed some element here we have passed some item here okay what is n queue function if we want to add new element at the rear end of the queue then we can call n queue function n queue operation okay next one is the d queue operation and just see here we are not passing any parameter in brackets okay because obviously element get removed from front end only that's why no need to pass any item here what is this d queue operation performs it removes an item from queue from the front end of it okay that is nothing but the d queue operation it it deletes an element from the queue next one is the is empty operation is empty this operation test whether the queue is empty or not okay this operation checks whether the queue is empty or not if queue is empty it will return true if queue is not empty that means if it is consisting of some number of elements then it will return false okay you see this is empty operation always returns either true or false it is returning true if queue is empty it is returning false if queue is consisting of some number of elements 
and the last operation on q is the size operation size operation it returns how many number of elements are right now present in a q okay these are the different operations which can be performed on q next thing is memory representation of a q using array memory representation of a q you see q is represented in memory using linear array q can be represented in computer's memory using an linear array you can use the concept of array linear array to create q for example let q it is an array and that array will have two pointers variables okay for example in programming we are creating an array with name q at the same time we are creating two pointer variables front with names front and rear okay then the pointer variable front it contains the address it contains the location of the element that we want to remove and the pointer variable rear it contains the address or the location of the last element from which we can insert new value okay in short in programming we can create q array we are creating two pointer variables that is front and rear front will contains front will able to store address at which we want to remove element rear will contain address at which end we want to insert elements and just see there are two conditions for the q if the condition is like front equals to null okay if the condition is like front is null it means the meaning of front equals to null means the q is right now null okay front is null front is nothing but the end from which we can we can delete the element okay and that front is already null if front is null that means q is empty there is nothing in q okay and second condition rear equals to n minus 1 rear equals to n minus 1 this is the condition which shows that q is full obviously q can be able to store n number of elements and the address starts from 0 to n minus 1 that's why if the value of rear is n minus 1 rear is nothing but the end at which we can insert element okay and if that end is consisting of n minus 1 it indicates q is full okay these are the two conditions we can check whether the q is empty or q is full okay how we can check q is empty if front is null then q is empty how we can check q is full if rear equals to n minus 1 then q is full okay these are the two important terms how to check whether the q is empty or q is full okay for example just refer this right hand side diagram for example we have created one q here we have inserted values a b c d okay this is the current instance of the q right now this is the front end front pointer this is the rear pointer and these are the memory addresses associated with the q that's why the value of front is this one address and the value of rear is this four address front is one and rear is one because front is nothing but the end at which we can delete element that's why front is address 1 and the value of rear is address 4 okay and just see now we want to insert element e into this queue obviously e will get inserted at the rear end that's why as we want to perform rear operation now that's why rear value get changed to rear equals to rear plus 1 and we are inserting element e at the rear end of the queue the see e element get inserted into the queue at the rear end here we are inserting the e element here okay and as we are performing insertion operation front value will remain as it is 1 and the rear get changed by previous rear plus 1 previous rear was 4 4 plus 1 it will become 5 okay you see that whenever we are inserting element front value does not change but rear get incremented by 1 okay and just see how we are performing dq operation we want to perform dq operation we want to delete element from the front from the front end element will get deleted we want to delete this element end delete element a 
Okay, just see this instance. Element A will get deleted. Front get changed to previous value. Okay, just see front will be right now at this address of B element. Okay, that's why the next value of front will be this two address and rear will same as that is five. Okay, just remember that whenever we want to perform delete deletion operation. The value of rear does not change. Rear is same, that is 5 and 5, but the front gate changed. Previous front was 1, but whenever we are performing deletion operation, front will get changed to 1 plus 1, that is 2. Okay. This is the way how we can perform insertion and deletion in a queue and how the values of front and rear, front and rear, front and rear get changed. The point to be noted here is that. If we are inserting value into a queue, front value does not change, but rear get incremented by one. And if we are performing deletion operation on a queue, rear value does not change, but front value get incremented by one. This is the important point. Okay, you see, queue insertion operation. Insertion operation in queue, it is also called as NQ operation. This is the algorithm which represents this NQ operation. Okay. For example, NQ function is there. To that NQ function, we are passing empty queue. We are passing queue with n number of elements. We are passing pointer rear and pointer front. And we are passing the item that we want to insert into a queue. Okay. We want to insert element now. Then what are the steps for inserting element into the queue? First step is that check whether the queue is full or not. Because if the queue is full, then we are not able to insert value. That's why we are checking the condition of full. We are checking whether rear equals to n minus 1 or not. If this condition is true, if rear is n minus 1, then system or the program should return queue is already full and you, we are not able to insert some new item into the queue and system should exit. Okay. But if this rear is not equal to n minus 1, that means there is some space in a queue and we can insert value into a queue. At that time, we are performing step 2. If front equals to null, you see now there can be two conditions of a queue. Either the queue is completely empty or queue is consisting of some number of elements. If the queue is completely empty, if queue is completely empty, it means front will be null. Front will be null, that is nothing but the condition that queue is empty. If the queue is empty, just assign values of front and rear both to minus 1 and insert that new element at the first location of the queue here. Okay. And we are incrementing rear equals to rear plus 1. Okay. This step get executed if the queue is empty and we want to insert element. At that time, this second step will be occurred. But if that queue is not empty, but some spaces are there to insert next value, at that time, the item that we want to insert, it will be inserted at the rear end of the queue. Okay. And system will return. Right. That means initially, what is the NQ operation? We are checking whether the queue is full or not. If it is full, system should exit. Then we are checking whether the queue is empty or not. If it is empty, we are performing step 2. And if Q is not empty but containing some number of elements, then this third, third step, step 3, will get executed. Next one is the deletion operation. Deletion operation of Q is also called as DQ operation. For that purpose, we have designed this DQ algorithm. We are passing Q with n number of elements. We are passing rear pointer and front pointer. And we are performing these number of steps. You see, step one is that we are checking whether the queue is empty or not. Okay, because if the queue is empty, then there is nothing to delete from it. And the condition to check whether queue is empty or not, we are checking whether front equals to null. If this condition is true, queue is empty and system should exit from the exit from the program. Okay. Otherwise, if the queue is not empty, then we are checking whether this front equals to rear or not. Okay, front equals to rear. Front and rear both are same if the queue is containing only one element. Okay, only one element is there and we want to delete that item. 
for that purpose we are checking whether the front and rear are same or not if front and rear are same that is there is only one element in the queue then assign front and rear both to null okay but if it is not containing only one element that is more than one elements are there at that time increment this front by front equals to front plus one okay that means if q is containing only one element assign front and rear to null but if it is not containing only one element then increment this front by front plus one okay and finally dq of front get performed dq of front means front ended element get deleted from the queue okay this is the algorithm for checking or for performing dq operation the next thing applications of queue the applications of queue are simulation various features of operating system in multi programming platform systems q can be used in different types of scheduling algorithms q can be used in round robin technique algorithm q can be used for printer server routings q can be used in various application softwares which are also based on q data structure okay the c hello everyone Mm, actually, the forty minutes get over. Uh, just I will just end this meeting and rejoin in one minute only. Yeah. Okay. Yes,